There are workshops, storage areas, power and water supplies. Everything needed to support the lives of the 30 contractors who work there. It's an awesome machine, and the Karanuka Dam project needs three of them. To cut construction time, the three TBMs work on different parts of the tunnel simultaneously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The first TBM cuts south. The second and third machines go east-west. And all of them are aiming to meet each other at predetermined locations in the tunnel. This is harder than it sounds, because underground there's no normal way of knowing which direction the machines are going. This far down, all reference to direction is lost. GPS or global positioning systems don't work. If they go off course, there'll be three separate tunnels going nowhere. The tunnels have to meet, of course, to get the, the, the water through. The job of making sure the TBMs go exactly where they're supposed to is down to the surveyors. Starting from a single known point, they use lasers to establish the exact location of the TBMs as they progress. The data is analyzed back at main camp to check if the TBMs are steering true, both horizontally and vertically. Using this information and a full array of computers and TV monitors on board, the drivers are able to steer the machines with incredible accuracy. The surveyors have tracked the TBM's path twice a day, every day, for over two years. Soon they'll find out if their calculations are correct. The tunnel borers are racing against the clock. The hydroelectric system has to be producing power by the autumn of 2007. To stay on schedule, the first TBM has to break through into the tunnel already bored by the second TBM by September 2006. If all goes according to plan, this meeting will take place here, halfway along the head race tunnel, in less than one month's time. The challenges are always the same, uh, that is to do the work in time. Uh, well, my job is to push everybody, the, the designer, the contractors and, and the supervision. And on a huge project like this, you know, the time schedule is of essence. This is tunneling on a time limit. If they can hit their deadlines, the water delivered by the tunnel will eventually arrive here, the powerhouse. This is where water will be turned into electricity. It's taken three years to carve this gigantic cavern out of solid rock. 340,000 cubic meters of rock have been cleared from inside the mountain. And the best way to clear a space this big is blasting. Okay. Go. Blasting is used for any excavations that are either too big or too small for the tunnel boring machine. But blasting above ground is dangerous enough. 180 meters underground, each detonation is a calculated gamble. This is a dangerous job. You have to have the right equipment and the right people, experienced people, that's always the same. There's a set pattern to this work. The area is cleared. The charge master primes his explosives, and everyone in the vicinity blocks their ears, closes their eyes, and braces for the blast. The shock wave surges up and down the confined space. The smoke clears, and success. A giant pile of rubble is all that's left of over 530 tons of wall, the weight of over three jumbo jets. That's a lot of rock, and it all has to be cleared. First, it's fed into a machine that crunches it into smaller pieces. This material is then fine enough to fit onto an industrial-sized conveyor belt, which is around 40 kilometers long. It's one of the most vital machines employed on this project. Without it, the tunnel would quickly become blocked. It's situated next to a subterranean railway, which carries a small army of men up and down the tunnels. 
our trains here are the only railway system that, that there is in Iceland. About uh, 60 kilometers of rails to be able to reach all the excavation points inside the tunnel. Sometimes we had rides of 50 minutes. You can take a nap, a small rest. High above the powerhouse, workers are constructing the pressure shafts. These are giant 420 meter vertical pipes that the water will plunge down before arriving at the turbines. But in order to drive the turbines, this water will be under huge pressure and handling that bone crushing force is no easy task. To prevent the high pressure water from bursting out, the pressure shafts are reinforced with massive steel pipe. Each piece is about 40 tons, lowered by heavy winch, put into place on top of the one below. It takes precise and careful maneuvering to guide a pipe that big into place. Next, workers carefully weld the sections together. It's a really tough job, I would say, you know, it's, it's hot in there and uh, this is not a job for anyone. Water will enter the powerhouse at 144,000 liters per second. A system failure anywhere in the pressure shaft would flood the powerhouse in seconds. It would be a disaster for the powerhouse. The powerhouse would definitely be flooded and that would be a big economic disaster. But that, that isn't going to happen. <laughs> All the pipes in this system have to be immensely strong to cope with the high pressure water they carry. It's the most unforgiving of adversaries. But the structure which has the toughest job with water is the dam. Stopping 2,100 billion liters of water from flowing away down the valley demands incredible planning and a highly skilled and conscientious workforce. The dam itself uh, has to hold uh, a huge amount of water and huge pressures. It's normal for dams to shift and settle over time due to the huge weight of the rock they're made from and the immense water pressure of the reservoir. If it settles properly, a dam will be strong. If it doesn't, the constant pressure of the water will force it to give way. To ensure that the Karanuka Dam isn't moving too much or in the wrong way, surveyors mark positions on the face and then plot them against fixed coordinates. Okay, Carlo, up 10 centimeters. Go up, up, go up. They can then measure in what direction and by how far the wall is moving. It continues to settle over time and it is important to keep this within certain limits. It's vital to monitor the, the behavior of the dam during the construction period. Like a hole in a dike, even a small weak spot could bring the dam down. And for a structure this big, it would be a disaster on an unimaginable scale. In 2006, Brazil's Campos Novos Dam, the third tallest of its kind in the world, suffered a major failure. Billions of gallons drained from the reservoir, causing a massive disaster. So in Iceland, the surveyors monitor construction at every stage, checking for movement. At 200 meters high, the dam is the tallest of its kind in Europe, and the engineers want to make sure it stays that way. Iceland, 2006. Workers are rushing to complete a massive tunnel. It'll link the Karanuka Dam to an electricity generating powerhouse 40 kilometers away. There are three tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, working their way towards each other, but they don't have long. To stay on schedule for piping water to the powerhouse by the autumn of 2007, this section of tunnel has to meet the next section in just three weeks. The challenges are, are always the same, uh, that is to, 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 to do the work in time. Each tunnel will pass through a variety of different rock types, and this has a huge impact on the progress of the TBMs. We are virtually crossing the, the whole uh, history of Icelandic geology on the way. And the oldest rock was something like 7 million years old, and the youngest was only 200,000 years old. It's a kind of like a like a cake or a tart, where you are always drilling th through the next layer. Chief geologist Peter Pitts keeps a close eye on things. 
Even a slight change in conditions can lead to problems. If the rock's too soft, it blocks the TBM's cutter head. You can see it here. We have to use some water to help the cutter head to turn the cooling, etc. And the water and these sediments together will clog the cutter head. He also watches out for structural weaknesses in the tunnel. Hit one, and they could have a cave in on their hands. Then there's the issue that has plagued this project from day one water. This whole hydroelectric system depends on harnessing the power of water, but it constantly finds a way to slow the tunnel boring machines. Large quantities of water coming into the tunnel. Very cold, two, three degrees, measurable working conditions, and the water's becoming too much in cases to actually be able to easily advance the TBM. Water is very difficult to handle. In most cases in tunneling, water is the biggest enemy of the of the tunneling people. It's a challenge, it's difficult to deal with water. In order to break through in three weeks, the team has to make sure nothing else slows the tunnel boring machines down. Easier said than done. Over at the powerhouse, workers have reached a critical moment in construction. Lowering part of one of the generators called the stator into position. This giant steel ring is six meters in diameter, filled with tightly wound wire and weighs over 130 tons. It needs to be treated with great care. It could easily crush delicate wiring or even worse, technicians working below. Just if we manage to lower it slowly, slowly. This generator is a piece of precision engineering. It has to fit together perfectly for maximum efficiency. Water flows from the reservoir into the head race tunnel and then plunges 420 meters down the vertical pressure shafts. It comes into the bottom of the generator under incredible pressure. When the water hits the turbine that sits at the base of the generator, it causes it to spin. This, in turn, rotates a shaft, which sits on top of the turbine. On top of the shaft are magnets, and when they spin inside a mass of wiring, it generates electricity. OK, all. Push down a little bit. Hop, stop. The planned output of the powerhouse is an astonishing 690 megawatts. That much electricity would power half a million homes. But only if they can get the water to the powerhouse. And that's looking doubtful. One of the TBMs has ground to a halt. It looks like an electrical fault. The thing is, that you always have to, to react to something that happens. And that's what we are, we are here for. Finally, they find the problem. A loose wire shorting out the machine. After emergency repairs, work on the tunnel linking the dam and the powerhouse is restarted. With just two weeks left, Teams in the tunnel and at the dam race to meet their deadlines before the winter freeze sets in. And they're busy at the powerhouse as well, with an exciting new arrival. This is a transformer. It takes the electricity coming out of the generator and increases its voltage before sending it off to the power grid. High voltage electricity is easier to transmit over long distances than low voltage electricity. And hydropower is all about maximizing energy output. So the transformers are key to the success of the project. This transformer and five others have to be hauled a kilometer down into the mountain. At 116 tons, that's no easy feat. Sitting four and a half meters high, it's very top heavy. Lean one way too far and the transformer could topple over. The team move it very carefully. But once inside the power plant, they face another challenge. Without room for a crane, 
These workers have to lift this huge component by hand. To lower the transformer, they use an old-fashioned technique called jacking down. It's a slow process, but there's no other way. It's very difficult to handle transformers which weigh more than 